All right, we're about to have a conversation about big picture strategy and anything goes. So it doesn't definitely does not have to be within the confines of what we've talked about so far. It can be something totally different. Like for example, it would be totally fair game for someone to say, hey, I think the strategy is to go populate Mars and you know ditch this planet before life gets completely extinguished here. I mean, I, I don't agree with that, but that would be totally fair game, right? Um, another strategy could be, well, hey, let the virus run its course. You know, we need to reduce human population anyway, and then we can start over. Again, I wouldn't subscribe to that at all. I think that would be omnicidal, um, actually, for reasons I'm happy to discuss. But again, fair game. Anything goes. That's why we call it kind of like the shark tank. And the idea is that just through conversation, and we'll do rapid fire, I think I'll maybe maybe loosen up on the two minute rule, maybe stretch it to two or four minutes, depending so that people can really kind of get their, express what they have to say, just like I'm doing right now. Um, and then if the conversation gets really dynamic and a lot of people want to speak at once, then we can, you know, adjust the time, the time limit. But I think that structure is very helpful. Um, but before we even go there, uh, any preliminary comments about the conversation itself, whether it's setting a context, um, which if Darmendra were here, I'd ask him to help us out with that. But if anyone would like to help us build a context around this, um, and it could even be, let's have a conversation about the goal first. I mean, for me, the obvious goal is saving as much of the diversity of life on earth as possible, halting the sixth mass extinction stopping the overheating of the planet, in fact, cooling the planet, restoring ecosystems, and transforming humanity so that, you know, we live in a world that we want to live in, not just in terms of the biosphere, but in terms of our own culture, our own story, our own game. What game or games are we playing and why, right? Anyway, I've spoken enough for my opening salvo. You get where I'm coming from, I hope. If you don't ask questions, and please share where you're coming from. No one's in the queue at the moment, so feel free to just start talking. And once one person starts talking, just raise your hand. Cesare, C Cesare, I'm sorry. And please pronounce your name for us all just so we get used to it. Um, and uh, just raise your hand if you want to join the queue. Go ahead, Cesare. Uh, so first of all, I just wanted to uh, try this button. I didn't uh, raise my hand before, and I want to see how that works. Uh, second of all, I think I'm going to go off and watch this video on the um, on the page. It says, like, watch these 30 minutes to, to get a good introduction. So is that what you recommend? Because I'm going to watch that, and I guess I'll come back to, to what you guys are talking about. That is a great idea, actually, Cesare. And I appreciate your taking the initiative to start that out, because I think everyone here has seen that 30-minute video. And if you haven't, go join Cesare and uh, pop up in a couple of beers, uh, maybe. And uh, anyway, all I'm saying is, yes, I fully endorse that. And then we'll just get you up to speed when you come back. But uh, just to clarify, is that is divided into a few segments. Is that right? Uh, because it says here, watch from minute 348 through 808 and then... Uh, 20 to 30, 32, is that correct? That is, that is exactly correct. And there's nothing wrong with the spaces in between. It's just that the whole of that video is like four and a half hours long or something like that. And so I've, I've chunked out just the crucial three segments that really give you the big picture of collective super intelligence as we're conceiving it uh, here on Radish. And um, you can always watch more later, but that'll give you a very solid foundation. All right, cool. So I'm going to head out over there. I'll see you guys in a, a little bit later. Right? Awesome, Cesare. And, is it, and it's Cesare, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Cesare. Yeah, it's pronounced Cesare. I think originally it's from Cesare, uh, but it's also Caesar, <laughs> if, uh, if you want to go with the English pronunciation. Right. Okay. So Cesare, 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 Cesare. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Maybe you've already shared this, but I'm interested in knowing more about you because your English is excellent. And uh, so I imagine you have must have spent time somewhere outside of Poland to speak so well in English. Yeah, I, I, I was born in Poland uh, when I was 12. I moved to Chicago 
Uh, I lived in the States for about 24 years. Now I'm back to Europe. I'm traveling between Ukraine and Poland. Uh, so I'm kind of quarantined in Poland right now, but it's basically it's, it, yeah, when I came back, I was more coming back to Europe rather than Poland. Poland is a little bit boring for me. I like what's, I'm interested in what's going on in Ukraine politically. You know, the people still have a revolutionary mindset a little bit more. They're more aware of the corruption in government. Uh, in Poland, I find people are a bit more passive uh, about that more in, you. yeah, it, it's a whole different like climate politically and culturally you know with if i'm not going to explain the situations right now but they're very different environments to me it's ukraine is more interesting and it actually kind of reminds me of poland when i left as a child it's it's funny i, I actually feel more at home in a foreign country than uh, than i do in my original country um but it's funny too you know it's like i feel at home you know, it doesn't matter where I am. I could be in Thailand or I could be in, I mean, I've never been to Thailand. I'm just saying I could be somewhere in Asia or, you know, somewhere where people go look completely different, speak a language I don't understand. But if I go into a vegan restaurant, I feel more at home over there, you know, than I do anywhere else, you know, than, than if I would back in Chicago or, you know, uh, in a non, you know, it, you know, in a, animal abusing environment so so it, it's interesting where we where we get our uh, let's say connections and communities and allegiances you know it's uh, you know it's interesting where where we draw those lines for who we identify with the most so yeah so it, in a way i guess I, I like i said i kind of feel at home in ukraine because of that uh, the political awareness uh, you know, well, a variety of reasons, you know, it's, yeah. Well, and, you know, uh, you could probably talk for hours just about all the things that you've experienced because of these cultural uh, explorations you've been firsthand to experience. And, uh, you know, I think that's where I think it's Emery. Um, I, I watched a replay where you guys were talking about collective intelligence and so many great apps were presented in a short period of time. And Emery, I think he's talking Wakelet and then there's um, the uh, something grid. What's that uh, that Melissa was using? Flipgrid. Flipgrid. So, you know, it'd be ultimately, yes, if we can just get everybody to start using these things and put together little, little introductions about who they are because you know Cesare I'm, I'm thinking you must have some ex really interesting experiences education wise and as well um, to share so anyway thank you I guess you're gonna go and watch the video so you can okay. take this up later. As far as education my my background is and I started I actually started uh, with studying music because that was at the at the time the only thing that I still did not have complete contempt for um and and then uh but then I, as i was studying music I, I actually the matrix came out and well no the matrix was already out but at my uh, college they had a uh matrix and philosophy class so i'm like all right you know let's let's check this out this this might be interesting then i got into philosophy and then as i got into animal rights um that really solidified my philosophy um, well, it, it really gave me a direction, solidified a direction for me. And then as I discovered market thinking, market theory, Adam Smith, and uh, then I started studying economics. And uh, so I actually have an interdisciplinary studies bachelor's degree with three minors in music, economics, and philosophy. I was almost close to getting a degree in each each one of them, but um, but it ended up being just a triple minor. Uh, but so all of my thinking is is actually it's rooted in in all of these three ways of disciplines and ways of thinking. Like my philosophy, the truth is supply and demand. That's that's the truth. That's the ultimate truth. It's 
uh, of everything. <laughs> um, and so, so yeah, so my philosophical approach, it's just rooted in economic uh, thinking. Um, that's how I approach problem solving. It, the, who cares about the truth? The question is, why do you want it? You, what, what drives you towards what you think the truth is? That's the, that's the interesting part. If, if you had, it's not like we have a sensory receptor for the truth. It's not like we can taste salt, you know, uh, or, or I'm sorry, truth, you know, like we can taste salt or, or sugar or, and even that can be deceived. So it's, well, here, let me, let me ruin the ending for you. Uh, basically my philosophy is, is based on, uh, it, in a sense, it's like creating a periodic table of the elements of consciousness. And one of those, the one, the, the main idea that I'm trying to develop is the desire for understanding. Uh, so, you know, I catalog the different types of desires that, um, that we're capable of experiencing. And, and so actually this is all in the framework of a theory of ethics, an amoral theory of ethics. And so uh, one of the, the main conclusions that, that I'm drawing is that ideas of morality as well as other arguments are actually simply just based on the desire for understanding so the mora morality is really nonsense but uh, but uh, it's just one of the arguments that people use to satisfy the desire for understanding uh, to make sense of the world um, and, but there are better uh, arguments than morality for uh, for how we should uh, or how we should or maybe even how we shouldn't regulate our behavior so that's a whole other story but but yeah the whole point is that it's it's all about desire and again like i said supply and demand so uh, it's about analyzing that demand the desire um, and that's where these these conceptual structures come from it's not because they're true it's just because we want something to solve our problems well, we're, we're a tool using species after all. So that's perfectly consistent with that paradigm. Man, so exciting to hear you talk, Cesare. I'm really, really excited for us to root down deeper and very grateful that you're taking the time to get to know us and you know, jump in the pool and start splashing around with us. I think you'll find this is a very, very friendly uh, environment and very open and very open to new ideas and new people. That's our whole idea. We're very expansive. We, we basically want this for the whole world. We want the world to be in conversation about all the things you're talking about, all the things Miles is talking about, all the things James is talking about, all the things Myra and Jackie, et cetera. Just, you know, let, let infinite flowers bloom and the ones that happen to grow towards whatever destination, sunlight, energy, happiness, whatever, go for it. Right. I'm sure you'll find people there who want what you have, speaking of supply and demand. So anyway, welcome home, Cesare. Welcome home, brother. Um, excited to talk more with you, as I can tell from everyone's faces. Even Myra is just frozen. Oh, right. Uh, with that. I knew I'm just kidding. Uh, but it's, I can just tell we're we are all super psyched to have you here, Cesare. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll see you guys uh, later. If, if not uh, tonight, then I might go to sleep. It is l getting late here and getting kind of sleepy. So if I don't catch you tonight, then I'll catch you maybe still tomorrow morning. Absolutely. We'll be going strong. We're, we're, we got 14 <laughs> hours and a quarter to go. So All right. We ain't going nowhere. Great. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Cesare. We'll see you soon. Well, that's super cool of Cesare to watch those 30 minutes. He kind of gets us all onto a common foundation uh, regarding, you know, collective super intelligence. And, um, and now uh, back to the shark tank, um, you know, where do we want to go from, from here? I was starting to give a little bit of context, like even a goal, you know, and, but, you know, I say, let it be shark tank, not just for strategy, but also for the goal. What is your goal? What do you think our goals should be as a species? Can we, you know, can we reach consensus on that? But I don't want to go too far down the, 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 the alley away of goals just because, I mean, I kind of think it's kind of obvious that's kind of what drew us all together is this common love of life 
and love of love and love of compassion and love of community and all these good things that are, you know, the, the title of Charles Eisenstein's second most recent book says it all, that more beautiful world our hearts know is possible. And a shout out to my buddy, Ryan. How do you, how you doing there, Ryan? And Maida, great to see you both. All right. Well, we're just having a conversation here. Feel free to jump in any time. Um, it's a really open, expansive, and I think fun conversation about strategy. And yeah, let's throw in goal as well. Anyway, like I said a few minutes ago, I've given enough of an intro. Um, who would like to chip in your ideas? Well, I'll chip in. Um, one of the things that I'm really benefiting from is to you know, come and go from things. So people who know me, they have used to see me over in Climate Healers. And I don't know if Jackie's on, but uh, I see your picture there. And I learned so much from the Climate Healers people. But then I'm like, okay, I'm not really i'm like goldilocks i'm not really feeling at home here you know for a while this bed's too soft this bed's too hard and then you know i'm off i head in back to the forest um so for me you know the block party is just the perfect thing because i'm still stuck back at culture and when the people started talking about sociocracy over there at Climate Healers. And they were saying, okay, we need vision, mission, goals, and culture. I realized, oh yeah, culture, that's exactly where I'm still unsettled. And for me, I cannot come into anything other than to socialize to make friends because what i'm working on is the culture and some people would say well we don't have time to be talking culture when we got to you know cool the planet sort of thing or we've got to address covid19 but for whatever reason this individuation journey that i'm on is this you know the numinous the one who beckons is telling me you've got to carry on with this culture question. And, and so, you know, when I read a little bit of history, like I shared about Chief Hendrick uh, at Albany, New York, it's American history, but it's also Canadian history. And it's Canadian history. Canadian history is also American history. And we do have to, I believe, even though you may think, well, we don't have time to go looking back at history. Um, we have to look at history to see where we uh, went wrong and uh, how, how it is that we got diverted and what did we do to people in the past, whether they're indigenous or they're, you know, people who were enslaved from Africa, the karma still has to be dealt with. And that's why I've, you know, before all this crap hit the fan, you know, I was, trying to learn more about the indigenous neighbors that I have that I had totally been oblivious of really until five years ago. But then thinking about, well, how is it that we're going to change the way we think? And uh, well, these indigenous people obviously have a different way of thinking. So that's where I'm at. I'm at culture, still grappling with it. And that's why I'm here to party, not actually conduct business because only when I have settled my culture questions and how that business needs to progress i i'm not doing any business i'm just learning and sharing and making friends very good well that is all totally super cool here at the block party and um you know i think culture is a big part of the strategy actually that we transform our collective culture from a culture of the individual and a culture of hoarding and possession and power uh, to a culture of all of us together. And maybe we dissolve ownership completely and go to a model of stewardship 
and where we're caring not just for Mother Earth, but for each other. And, you know, that's, th that is so far beyond a cultural transformation. It's like a transformation in being, right? I don't even have the words for it, right? But Yes, and when I said everything I said, I'm not trying to dissuade anybody from getting on to business. You know, like, by all means, your individuation, the one who's beckoning is maybe calling you to do business right now get on with it create a radical collective super intelligence figure out all the nuts and bolts in that and you know without delay so what i said was just from my particular journey and place that i find myself at yep no problem and certainly no uh conflict no inconsistency um, everyone is welcome to come here to the Collective Intelligence Block Party for whatever reason they wish to come. If you want to do business, join us in, well, not monetary business, but getting down to the business of developing collective superintelligence and sol solving our problems. Um, so uh, anyway, I'd love to hear from more people. Let's uh, hear from everyone who wants to share um, thoughts about our goals, big picture strategy, how to get there, et cetera, et cetera. James, love to hear from you, brother. Go for it. Thanks, Chairman. Um, yeah, and thanks for that as well, Miles. Uh, it's good to share, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I, you know, for a long time, I found myself, I suppose, as we're all, we we're all came here originally, like, um, we're all here for the collective intelligence originally for, Sorry, is there someone coming across? Oh, so someone had their microphone phone off, but it's fine now. All right, sorry, I thought. Uh, no, but I'm just saying, like, I'm here really anyway because uh, for a long time there, no, well, for a while back now, like, I've been sitting at home thinking on my own, like, most of the time on my own because I live on my own anyway. So at night when I'm on my own, I should say, because I've always had a, a busy house. To be honest with you, it's always been too busy for me. Most times uh, it gets stressful sometimes when I was so busy, but you know, it only took a pandemic to ca to fix that anyway. I'm, I'm after having a nice peaceful week and a half so far. <laughs> but the point is, um, yeah, I'm here, I'm here at the block party because um, I, I, I think I, I was led here, basically. I, that's the way I believe it anyway. Like, I, I believe I was led here because for a while now, a long time now, like I've been searching for answers to all all the questions that we'd be asking here, like and, and just all, all the all the problems that you referenced there a while ago, Jim, that need to be addressed and there are all the reasons why you know, we all spend time at home thinking about these things when we get time on our own, I, I assume anyway. Uh, I know there are those that don't even, you know, they don't even enter their heads like those thoughts, like I suppose. And in you know, in a sense, that's like they say, ignorance is bliss, and in a sense, that's true. Um, but I'm here because I believe that I was sent. I I, I believe I was led here, uh, and I believe I was led here for for the reasons that uh, I think we we all agree on here that we're we're getting or finding some form of solace here anyway in the in, in the collective. In the conversations we have, we find some solace in that alone, um, regardless that we're not even at the stage where we're, you know, we're not even at the stage where we can actually start uh, devising or fixing anything as such, no, other than, as we uh, talked about tonight, this in, the introduction side of things and getting to know each other is vital to all this as well, and obviously this is what the conversations are about. And I feel that growing every week that I've been here and involved in these conversations. So that only reinforces with me all the time now, like that um, this is the right place to be and that I was led here for the right reasons. And I believe wholeheartedly that like it is basically humanity's only chance for us to do anything if we are to try and do anything and come together, uh, you know, prevent all these terrible things that are happening, then it is in the collective. There is no other way. We can only do it as a collective. Uh, and, you know, that has to start somewhere, you know, as um, 
as Jamin put it very wisely there the other night there when he was talking about um we like when we think of we have the vast amount of problems that we're we are facing and um it's overwhelming. I can understand that. It's overwhelming. I, I sat here many a night on my own frustrated about the whole of it. Saying it's overwhelming. There's no way it can be fixed. I mean, we all know what Guy McPherson's policy is it, up until recently. You know, it, we're damned if you do, you know, doomed if you do and doomed if you don't kind of a situation. There was no way out of it. That was a, well, I always thought and I always do believe that there's always a way out of something. And I, I always believe that. Um, you know, humanity is. You know, we are. Uh, we are. Um, we are a common species with our fellow species on the planet. But for one thing, we we do collectively come together and figure out things and uh, you know work around things as a group and everything else. Other, I know other animal species do that now, but we do it on a greater scale. That's why we're the dominant species, obviously. So what I'm saying is. I believe that there is always a hope for us in that sense, because once we come together, especially when we have a common enemy or a common, you know, a common reason to come together, and we do, like the coronavirus is only bringing that to the fore now for most people. And what I think our priority, I think that's what I was saying the other night, our priority is obviously now to get as many people on board with the collective conversations to start getting in push and start building uh as you were saying um like a library of thoughts and ideas and start fix you know helps we can't get there until we start building together and anyway, start getting together in the conversation i'm rabbit and i know because i'm losing what i'm saying my point is i'm here for i was led here i know i was led here and i know it's the only way to go and i wholeheartedly see jamin's vision and the group's vision from the moment i latched eyes on the group originally in the other conversations on radish and everything else and um i was touched by everybody's input in it and um there's just you know common sense is common sense is the way i see it like so you know uh i'm, I'm blabbing on so i'm going to say no more other than you know we just need to start gathering numbers now and that will be gathering the input then Beautiful. Thank you, James. And I want to welcome Nicole back and welcome to everyone. And uh, Nicole, first of all, there's never any pressure to talk on the block party. So you're never on the spot. It's totally fine to just hang out with your camera on or off or whatever and feel free to jump in. So we'd love to hear from you, but no pressure. Sometimes people, if it were me coming here, I'd probably just want to hang out for a little bit and kind of just feel out what's going on. So that's totally fine. And uh, Anyway, so yeah, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Um, love to hear more sharing. James, oh, yeah, James, go ahead. I, I just want to say hi, Nicole. I just, I've, I, I didn't realize you were after getting on because I only see four people. So nice one. I'm delighted you found, you, you've been persistent. Uh, Nicole had been trying to get on a couple of weeks ago as well, and uh, she had been having trouble with the links. So I sent her the last link that she emailed me there, and she's finally got on. So... She'll figure out how to chat if she wants to on you. She can have a chat. She's just like any other Irish person. She's well able to. Wonderful. Awesome. 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 Excellent. Well, I am so proud of our Irish contingency. Um, it's just amazing. So, um, all right. Well, love to hear from everyone. So, um, feel free to jump in. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Nicole. I see you've taken your microphone. Oh, <laughs> I just wanted to say thanks very much to James there for that. I've obviously been trained to join for a few weeks, as James has said. I found your um, videos very interesting. I've been watching along on YouTube. Um, I'm not fully up with the stats and the research and stuff, but I suppose I'm just here to learn. I'm a social care worker myself. So I work, I've studied a lot of psychology and sociology and would be interested in that sort of aspect of things. Um, yeah, so that's it really. So thanks very much. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Nicole. So great to have you here. And by the way, please don't feel like you need to be up on whatever statistics or science or research or anything like that. The whole point of collective intelligence is we all come together from wherever we're coming from right from whatever part of the world whatever age whatever religion whatever background you name it 
urban, rural, it's all good. Um, and just, uh, we just share together and we co-create. And so it's much less about, oh my goodness, I need to know everything in order to play here. No, no, not at all. I know what I know and I have my gifts, whatever they are and whatever, you know, exotic mix of gifts and talents and knowledge and experiences and, and whatnot. Um, each of us is totally unique. And that's the key to our success here is that we all come together with our uniqueness and we just mix it up in these very um, creative and compassionate and uh, hopefully fun and interesting ways. Mm -hmm. All righty. Great. Would love to hear more sharing. Who would like to share about, and, and let me just kind of interject just super quick. So, um, you know, the, the, the topic, you know, the designated topic for this period of time is strategy and, and, um, but it, but we can deviate from that all that we want. That's just kind of more of a general guideline, but, ju but just to give kind of a concrete example of strategy, let me talk about the strategy that I've kind of been defaulting to lately, which is three, three stages. Stage one, uh, build and evolve collective super intelligence so that it is growing exponentially by leaps and bounds. And then with that collective super intelligence, we can then set about solving our problems and transforming our world in all the ways that we want. And that's where stage two and stage three come in. Stage three, stage two, the second stage is all about applying our collective super intelligence to stopping the coronavirus and ending world hunger. And the thought I have about that, uh, or that we have, is that um, we could, uh, humanity as a whole, including governments, private sector, all the way down to neighborhoods and households, we can organize ourselves leveraging our collective super intelligence because it's going to be quite a coordination task, right? Um, and the best way I could think about it is centralized planning where the center is the collective super intelligence of all of humanity. So you are the center, we are the center, etc. It's not like there's some government in Moscow figuring this out for us and then pocketing the surplus or something like that. No, this is about humanity coming together as a whole. So um, uh, humanity as a whole using collective super intelligence to orchestrate the distribution of healthy vegan food to all of humanity, partly so that people can stay home and we can just, you know, um, kill off the virus by lack of contact between people. And of course, people doing the food distribution would adhere to the strictest standards of their own safety and the safety of the food and the people they're delivering it to, et cetera. But anyway, that's stage two. Apply our collective super intelligence to solve our two most immediate problems which go hand in hand now, hunger and uh, coronavirus. And then stage three would be applying our collective super intelligence to cooling the planet, which was our most urgent item um, before the house caught fire metaphorically with coronavirus and all the attendant risks and collapse that it's bringing. So we first need to right the ship stage two, we first need to get really smart, stage one, then right the ship, stage two, taking care of people, basically, so that we can, you know, uh, be healthy, happy, and productive. And then stage three, apply both collective super intelligence and the health and happiness and integrity of humanity to collectively cooling the planet through very aggressive measures of solar radiation management principally, um, which is a really big deal that used to be dominate our, our conversation until Corona showed up. And now we've got to, you know, right the ship before we can sail anywhere. Um, anyway, so that's an example of a three stage strategy. Now I could even, I could describe it in fewer words and I will. The high, high level is let's get collectively super intelligent and then use that super intelligence to redesign our world, including the solution of immediate problems, long-term problems and everything in between. But beyond solving our problems, redesign our world to that world. And here's where I'm gonna take borrow from Charles Eisenstein, the writer, 
and the title of his second most recent book, That More Beautiful World Our Hearts Know Is Possible. And I always love saying that because it makes Nancy Nancy dr just drift off into, a, into sleep, as you see her doing right there. Anyway, um, that more beautiful world our hearts know is possible. We know a more beautiful world is possible. Look all around us. Look at the abundance. Look at the beauty. And look at how, how wonderful humans can be when we're at our best. Why the heck wouldn't we come together and simply get rid of all the stupidity and promote the good? Nature, wildlife eating vegan so that we don't have to kill animals, right? Living communally, it's way more fun, way less lonely, and it has far less footprint. And living a lot more, frankly, like we're living right now, chilling out at home and gardening and spending time talking with each other than driving, you know, two hours to work in some place where we don't want to be, and then to drive two hours home, emitting, emitting contaminants all, all the way and everything else. Um, anyway, I just wanted to give those brief little examples of strategy so that you know what I'm talking about when I say strategy. There's high-level strategy, let's get smart and then transform everything down to, you know, more detailed progression, stage one, stage two, stage three. Anyway, feel free to riff off of that. Feel free to, um, you know, pipe up with your own ideas or thoughts or strategies or whatever else. That's what this time is for. And we've got lots of time here on the 24-hour block party. So we're not in a hurry. Quite to the contrary. Um, all right, I'm gonna go on mute and feel free to jump in as there's no one in the queue. I'll jump in quickly. Uh, so I watched a recording of the collective intelligence meeting and you had Car on and some other interesting people and there was a lot of these apps presented, as I mentioned, Wakelet. And Emery just shared his little wakelet posting, and we have the flip grid. There were different message boards, and I wrote down a list of things that I learned. I'm wondering if, and I think you came to the conclusion after that very long collective intelligence party, that, um, yeah, eventually you'd like to have some sort of algorithm or coding done that's gonna, going to link all these different apps and platforms together. But for now, we are the algorithm or the link. So riddle me this, Batman. Um, do we, should we be in these block parties saying, okay, we're going to carve out uh, some half an hour every so often, every couple hours, maybe half an hour, where we all just pause and we go in and we tweet something out, we post on a message board, we do a Facebook, Facebook post, um, how can, would that help things maybe go viral? Um, this message that, you know, we need to, um, first of all, stop buying meat and dairy, you know, um, can we make that go viral? And uh, we, we got all this time sitting around here, we're all locked down. And as I said, how is it that the government can lock us all down? I guess I'm not arguing against it, it's, it's needed. But we've just like, okay, we're all locked down. We're not going to school. We're not going to work. We're staying off the buses as much as possible. Look at how that's just, the airlines have shut down, basically. Airports are, have tumbleweeds blowing through them now. Um, we did that that fast in one week. So how is it that just getting people to stop on their next trip from buying that pork loin or that those eggs and that butter and, and getting the vegan substitutes, how, that is so much easier than what we've just done in one week. So anyhow, back to what I said, can we do little fun moments of learning Wakelet, learning how to do a flip grid, and et cetera, every so often during these block parties? And what do you think? Yeah, you, you've raised a bunch of cool stuff, Miles. A couple, I mean, one is, is learning the use of these different tools. Um, I think probably the most effective way or productive way to do that might be for someone to volunteer to go and figure out Wakelet and Flipgrid and learn whatever features. So, someone who's called to do that. That wouldn't be me, by the way, right? Um, I'm kind of a little bit fed up with new technologies. <laughs> I mean, I want, I want them to be used on the platform. Um, 
but uh, and I will use them myself, but I don't want to be too deep in in the weeds. But for somebody else, that's like, wow, I love doing that. I'd love to learn about you know Wakelet and let everybody know. So I love that idea. Um, yeah. So here's an example in the in the course of this morning, Nolan updated his tweet, the radish tweet about this block party. I retweeted it and I got a like from Mitch Jackson, the streaming lawyer. He's an award-winning lawyer in Orange County, California. He's an amazing master of social social media. I, at first I thought he retweeted it, which would be amazing because he's got a huge following of movers and shakers, but at least he liked it. He's great, he responds so often. Then another gentleman, Skip Conover, of his Carl Jung Depth Psychology Reading Group, he both liked it and he retweeted it. And he's got a he's got a big BTS following, BTS Army, the Korean pop group, people, um, and I think he's got fifty thousand followers on Twitter. So anyway, um, that was very easy for me to just take a moment because you can you can close down your camera and you can. Um, you know, like I just did there, and you can still hear people talking, but you can go into, you close just, I'm on an iPad, so you just squish the screen, and then you can launch Facebook, you can launch um, Safari, uh, you can launch Twitter, anything that's you've got going, and you could do it, and you're still hearing everybody talking. So I'm just saying, there's an opportunity for us to all be, all be these bots, so to speak, you know, not waiting for you to create or radish or anybody else to create bots. We do it. Love, love, love that idea, Miles. Absolutely. And so, and this is actually quite relevant to this conversation because um, like, let, let's take the example of tweeting something about veganism. And Nancy, I see you got your hand up and thank you for your patience. I just wanna respond super quick to Miles and then I'll pass you the, the microphone, uh, Nancy. Um, is like, let's say we were to tweet, you know, just go out and tweet, tweet, tweet about veganism. Hey, go vegan, go vegan, whatever. Um, that's one thing. Now, that's one strategy to get the world to go vegan. Now, imagine a slightly different strategy that said, Let's develop our collective super intelligence and then figure out the best way using our collective super intelligence to get the world to go vegan. All right, you see the difference? And th this maps to a quote from Abraham Lincoln that I like to cite um, that goes like this. If I had six hours to chop down a tree, I would spend Wait, if I had eight hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first six hours sharpening the ax, right? Or something like that. I'll have to look up the exact numbers, but you get the point. So collective superintelligence is the ultimate ax. Once we sharpen that, and please pardon the, the felling of trees uh, part of the story. I, don't, I certainly don't support that. Um, but with the, the collective superintelligence is an exponentially sharpening ax that if it can't solve your problem today, wait a week, let it grow exponentially between now and then and try again, <laughs> right? So um, anyway, it's, it's kind of an uber strategy of sorts that is kind of all encompassing. Um, but anyway, so just wanted to throw that out there as just to kind of build off of what you were saying, Miles. And Nancy, you've been very patient. Uh, please take it away. You got to unmute your microphone, Nancy. Either that or yell real loud. Hi, hi guys. Sorry. Uh, nice to see you all today. Um, just, I'll try to keep it brief. Uh, yeah, no, I think we're all wondering, like, uh, I think why it's been easier, so to speak, to get people to quarantine is because they actually see the immediate threat to their health. And whereas telling people, you know, getting people to stop eating animal products, um, they don't actually see that. They don't see that as an immediate threat to their health. They don't still understand. And also, you know, people's choices for food are primarily based first on pleasure and social connection. Those are really the biggest drivers. And so my, uh, 
primary method of even promoting veganism now with food is to promote it as something that is, uh, you know, pleasure and joyful and abundant and all the things that people actually associate with food. Um, while it's important that people know the dangers and all of the horrors of animal agriculture, I haven't seen that, at least with the major mass, major majority that we're coming up to now, as something that actually will, you know, gets them to stop eating animals. They, it seems to, they seem to gloss over it. You know, they're m largely not motivated by altruism. People have to know what's in it for me. How's it going to help me? And you know, that's why right now people are scared the looming threat because they see the, an immediate threat. Whereas, you know, with eating, you know, habitually eating animals, and it's so um, deeply woven into the fabric of our culture that, uh, you, you know, that getting the getting good vegan options, getting good vegan food, more and more prevalent, and that is happening. That is happening. It's relatively new, you know. So, um, and I've I've been sharing a lot of information too and it seems like it's getting across where uh this you know this is not going to be the last viral pandemic we have it's probably going to more and more will keep coming because they most of them start from animal agriculture but the problem here is people in this country are thinking oh it's in the chinese markets or it's in these markets where we don't have that here they don't realize well actually we do most of this factory farming most of the animals are in factory farms and those animals have to be given a lot of drugs and they do still are vectors of disease, you know. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. I love everything you said, Nancy. Did you hear it? You walked away. I promise you that I heard every word. I was in the background there, but hearing every word, I promise you. And when I say I love everything you say, I don't just say that because it sounds nice. I believe you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Wonderful sharing. Let's create some space for the people who haven't shared yet. And it's okay if we're silent for a minute or two. Silence is not a bad thing. Right, Nancy? All right. Nancy concurs. So if you haven't spoken, feel free to jump in. Or if you haven't spoken much, feel free to jump in. And welcome, Brother Fred. I see my brother Fred's on. He's off camera, so. But great to have you here, Fred. Emery. Love to hear from you. Take it away. <clears throat> hey, gentlemen. I have a question for you. You, uh, you remember Brett? Brett? Uh, w w Warshawski? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, uh, I, I finally had a chance to, to check out uh, his uh, <clears throat> Nolans and uh, you know, it's, uh, I found it was really incredible. It's uh, uh, very, very interesting. Once you understand uh, the concept of it, you know, when he first made his presentation, uh, it kind of went over my head a little bit. I was, maybe I wasn't uh, as focused in on it as uh, I normally would be, but uh, I, I've been going to see uh, different uh, videos on on it um, I mean he's in alpha stage for for that uh, platform that he's created but it's a real fantastic uh, fantastic platform I find and and uh, an offshoot of that idea came to my mind Google Earth you know <laughs> Google Earth imagine platform like Google Earth, but it was uh, for social uh, media. Like, you know, you'd, you'd be, you'd be uh, listed 
in Google Earth, but it's it wouldn't be called Google Earth. It could have another name for it, you know. But through that, you'd have uh, unlimited connections, and you know, you could zoom in, zoom into your location, and uh, you, you know, watch your video or whatever you uh, you have going at any particular moment. You know, you have your connection. Just a seed of an idea. No, great, Emery. I, I love the idea of an interactive visual interface that's like 2D or 3D. And I, I hear what you're saying, like Google Earth. Um, but maybe instead of navigating, you know, continents and countries and counties and cities and all that, um, what if you were instead navigating the toposphere of all of the topics? That exactly. Are, yeah. And then... And you could even do a mashup. You could you could go around the toposphere and click on this topic and this other and this other. Click click click. Like you're checking check boxes where you can check multiple of them, and um, say, show me all conversations that are at the intersection of these three topics. And you make a collection, like in Wakelet, you make a collection of of those topics at your at your location. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, exactly. Love it. And, you know, as we, as we discuss all this, right, there's, there's this very strong element of over there, right, that there's this platform on the other side of some series of steps that we're going to take. And, oh, my goodness, once we have it, won't, wouldn't it be cool? I'm reminded of the Beach Boys song. Wouldn't it be nice if we were older, then we wouldn't have to wait so long. All right? And it's like, oh, it's going to be so great when we have that platform. Um, and just a couple thoughts about that. Um, and I'm going to get back to the Beach Boys song in a minute. Raise your hand if you know what I'm about to sing. Um, but by talking about it, okay, by talking about it and visualizing it, and even talking about the kind of elements that we want to bring into it from Brett's world, from Wakelet, Flipboard, etc., it starts to form and crystallize. And now our vision, our collective vision is growing. And that's a, that can be a very attractive thing. And in fact, we want it to be an attractive force to bring in all the rest of the people who we need to actually make it happen. And here comes the other part from the same Beach Boys song. But you know, the more we talk about it, it only makes it worse to live without it. But let's talk about it. Oh, wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> <laughs> All right, with Nancy on instrumental. It's a party. It's a block party. Anyway, great sharing, everyone. More sharing, especially if you haven't shared yet. Maybe we should sing a song together. Great. What song would you like to sing? I have no idea. <laughs> that actually is a pretty good song. Should we sing it? Here, let me get the lyrics. And the, or, or a Beatles song, Come Together. <clears throat> I might be hungry to sing though. Here, let me, let, me, uh, let me get the right music up. And while I'm doing that, feel free to share. All right, screen sharing now per Nancy's request. Feel free to sing along. 
We live in strange times. The housing bubble. for suggesting that. <laughs> that was nice. We didn't have to wonder if that would be nice. So anyway, <laughs> now Cesare might think we're a little bit crazy. Um, and we are. Uh, at least I'll speak for myself. I am. Nolan, too? Yep. Okay, thanks. Um, we were just talking about envisioning the platform that we're trying to build. Um, and, you know, and that got us to the Beatles song, oh, Wouldn't It Be Nice, which is sung by, you know, it's sung by the Beach Boys, but it's about, you know, a young couple that probably in their teens, their boyfriend, girlfriend, and they're thinking, wouldn't it be nice if we were older? And then we'd be married and everything would be great. Here we are just beckoning not to be married in our case, but to have this platform, to have collective super intelligence with all the amazing scenarios that Cesare is dreaming up and working on and all the amazing scenarios that Brett uh, Warshawski is coming up with. Um, who's not on at the moment, but will probably be here a little later. When he wakes up, he's over in England, right? And on and on. We've got so much cool stuff to incorporate. Um, looks like we got some requests for more songs. Maybe we, maybe we do a song every hour or something like that, <laughs> just to mix it up. <laughs> um, anyway, Cesare, welcome back, and love to hear your thoughts since uh, after watching the video. Hey, uh, uh, good to be back. It's uh, it was a little bit lengthy. I I think some of the stuff could have been abbreviated. Um, I'm all about efficiency. Um, <laughs> I, but but yeah, man, <laughs> do it, <laughs> do, do it, <laughs> everything you want. <laughs> That's what Ecora does. <laughs> it's what what. Well, well. Everything you want. That's what Igora does. <laughs> it's, it's I like, love it. Oh, bring on Igora. Bring on Igora. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, what, what's interesting about this platform, too, and, and this is uh, one aspect I want you can, to consider it, because uh, when I created this concept specifically, it, it was intended for, with a specific 
problem that I was trying to solve. And the question was, how do you create, how do you make politics rational? That was the, that was the, that was the question. That was the problem I was trying to solve. And the simplest way that I framed it is that if you want politics to be rational, it has to be a system where the philosopher has the advantage. Um, and so what does that mean? And so I, I created a system where I would have the advantage um, as opposed to the demagogue, somebody who gives, you know, good sounding answers that aren't really based in reality, that, that are flawed, but they sell well, you know, and as opposed to, you know, thoroughly developed research based in reality as far as you can dig. Um, so yeah, and that's, that's what I created, but uh, more specifically that the, the question, the system of intelligent democracy, uh, it has two parts. One of those parts is the Agora networking platform. The other part is the International Logic Party. So the system was specifically designed uh, for, you know, well, okay, I, I guess the original question was really, what if there was a political party that just tried to be logical? But that, that was its goal. Like, no matter what, like, what is the fucking logical thing, you know? And so, the, well, one of the first, uh, one of the first conclusions was that, well, if you're gonna have a logical system, it has to be self-refining. And if it's gonna be self-refining, then it has to be open to solutions from anywhere, which means that it has to be international. It has to be open to solutions, you know, you can't, <laughs> yeah, if somebody, if some other people have a good solution over there, let's listen to them. It doesn't matter if they can't vote here. Let's, let's listen to what they have to say, you know? And so, so yeah, if you're gonna have a logic party, it has to be an international logic party. It's just, flat out that there's there's no other way about it um so and yeah then the the other question was okay so how would the how would the party structure itself and so then how would it uh and that and that's where the whole question came about okay so how do i create a system where the philosopher has the advantage uh, but so what i wanted to say is that's how it's shaped basically intelligent democracy has two parts the International Logic Party is an essential feature, is, is an essential component of that system. The International Logic Party, basically it's five principles that it's really difficult to disagree with if you're a reasonable person. It's impossible to disagree with them. Unless maybe you live in China and there is a there is a actual danger for identifying yourself with another political party other than the Communist Party. So. So yeah, it it's really doesn't make sense to not identify yourself as a member, but it's okay. You don't have to if you don't want to. But So the point is, is, it is for the International Logic Party, the members of the International Logic Party, but not only the members of the International Logic Party, anyone else can also use the system, but they use the Igora networking platform to build their own political philosophy to show which ideas are, are supported by the people and then to nominate candidates who represent the ideas of the people. Um, but the, what's interesting about Igora it's in using, you know, the stock market for organizing information is it's also really useful for other communities to self-organize. It's uh, because, yeah, it's ultimately it's just a way of aggregating information. Uh, it's about each individual uh, specifying what they're about, what their f philosophy is, what are the components of their values, ideas, and, and things like that, and then putting all of that together to show, you know, an index for the group. So, uh, yeah, I just, I mean, I, I don't know where this specific group uh, stands with uh, Radish, how it feels about identifying itself with any political party or not. I mean, what's funny about it is that the International Logic Party is a nonpartisan political party. It's, it's you know, it's, I mean, ultimately it's, it's a political party to end all political parties, you know, but uh, so, so yeah, in a way, yeah, it's a, uh, well, it's a, it's, it's a paradox, but you know, some different people can take it you know one way or another oh it's a political party oh no we can't but it's not a political party it's really just a bunch of rational people who's you know who rationally organize information and admit to being rational people um so 
if, if you if you're opposed to that well i'm sorry <laughs> you know you don't want to identify yourself as a rational person but uh so okay but but yeah sure so somebody could I don't know, for whatever reason, somebody could have an aversion to that. But I, I'm saying that the technology is open for other, for other groups. Uh, and, and, you know, our, uh, everything is open software, uh, open, uh, you know, what, what is it? Open source, like our software, anyone can take our, you know, our code and use that for their own community to organize itself. And our, our, and originally the system wasn't designed, I mean, I designed it with global problems in mind because my, the things that I focus on are global issues. So, uh, you know, I'm thinking about animal liberation, you know, to me, that's the most important thing. And uh, of course, then there's the climate, there's, there's the environment, all of these are global things, you know, they, they don't stop at the border. Uh, or, you know, actually, I mean, hell, there are all kinds of humanitarian issues, you know, that are, uh, yeah, there's, there are so many global issues. So anyways, that's where my thoughts are. And so the, the system was intended for, you know, electing, like using the USA as an example, maybe electing anything from the mayor up. Uh, but this system can also be used, we can create an Igora that serves just specific cities uh, where people from within a city can say, what are their most uh, urgent needs? Oh, we have to fix this street. We have to fix the power lines to this, this district. And so people can prioritize that information. People can express those ideas. And so we can also use that to govern on a local level. Uh, but again, like I said, it can also be used for communities. Just, you know, you could have a church uh, and, I mean, or a mosque. I mean, I, I mean church in a loose sense of the word, but uh, you can have just, any group of people, any community that's helped trying to identify itself as a group and find a common direction. So it can be used uh, for that as well. Um, yeah, so, so the options are, are the, it could potentially be used for businesses. I don't really know how that would be used in businesses, but because um, people might be, because see, the, the system is based on honesty. That's transparency and honesty. And in businesses, people don't have the same incentives to be honest and transparent because they might lose their jobs if they say something that's that's not uh whereas citizens they don't have to worry about that uh citizens you know i mean that loosely but but yeah so so potentially businesses i don't know but community members maybe well yeah probably depending on how critical a community is if it's open-minded then it's good if it's not well it's probably not going to last any long anyways but I'm looking forward to, you know, to showing this stuff because, you know, talking about this abstractly, it's, uh, it, it really gets, yeah, it's just, you can, only get, you can only get, but so far talking about it. Abstractly. Right, right. Yeah, we, we just got to dig. I just want to show you what the, what the, what the tool looks like and start using it, start using it to communicate some stuff, compare, what are our thinking? And I mean, this system literally, it's a huge time saver. It literally lets people look into each, you know, each other's heads, you know, on, on whatever you want to make public, of course, but it helps. That's the whole point is it helps people get to know each other so much faster. Like it's an insane time saver. Well, I'm super intrigued. Uh, let me just ask you, uh, Cesare, how long would it take for you to give us a meaningful kind of first look? Um, well, I've, I, you know, I've made this video, uh, it's a, like 19 minutes, 19 minutes and 13 seconds. Uh, I've done that uh, presentation. Uh, I put that together so that I could easily share it. Um, I mean, I could potentially share a screen and walk you through it, although in a sense that I'd rather actually play the video than... than I'm game. Do you want to play it or do you want me to play it? If you could play it, that would be much better. I, I would prefer I'm that. Pasting you the link in the chat again. I think you pasted it a while back, but so I don't have to look for it. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm looking it up right now. And while you're looking it up, I'll just ask: Are there any? parts of the video where, where Nancy and I uh, and Les could sing along. 
<laughs> wait, wait, what? I'm just Are kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> who, who, who else was singing when we were when we were doing the? Uh... Okay. All right, Nolan was singing. Awesome, awesome. All right, let me uh, let me get that started over here. Chrome, and I'll screen share in a moment as soon as I've as soon as I've got it up. And, and feel free to comment on my delivery technique. I mean, you, you know, I, I don't care if you're brutal, you know, it only helps me improve. So uh, I, I know I'm not the most exciting speaker. Um, it's, I'm excited about ideas, not, you know, I'm not really a performer, so. Uh, would... Well, with the, the community that you have here with the substantial vegan contingency, we're a pretty brutal bunch, um, <laughs> so beware you ask for brutality uh, anyway <laughs> I'll, I'll be watching but my camera is going to be off as i go make myself a bowl of popcorn you're about to say a bowl of pot anyway all right so screen sharing and then we'll have lots to talk about i say we just watch it all the way through and then we'll and just take notes and then we can reconvene all right take it away Cesari. Thank you for joining me here today on the Agora Experience. I am your host, Cesare Jurevich. In this episode, I will be giving you a basic quick start tour of Agora. See, normally, this program is about using the Agora to facilitate a discussion between me and a guest on the program, and we discuss the various ideas inside of Agora. But in this episode, I will be giving you an overview and introduction on how to actually use this technology. Now, for those of you who are completely new, Igora is a new kind of networking platform that was built and published in January of this year, 2020, by the International Logic Party. This platform gives people real political power, and it actually makes democracy rational, efficient, and incorruptible. But let me briefly explain to you the theory behind that. Imagine you have a small society, like a village or a small town, let's say 30 or even 300 people. If those people want to have a real democracy, they can all come together maybe once a week, and they can have a town hall meeting. And in that town hall meeting, everyone will get to speak out to voice their ideas, opinions, and concerns. It doesn't matter if they are rich or poor, because if everyone takes a turn to speak, they all have the same ability to be heard by everyone else. There is enough time for all of that to happen. Time is the key factor here. However, humans do not live in small societies like that anymore. We have societies of millions and billions of people. And it is impossible for us to all have one big town hall meeting where everyone gets to speak and be heard by everyone else on equal terms. So what happens is that rich people end up having more power because they have more money to gain access to all of the different media channels, TV, radio, even YouTube, basically anything where you can leverage money for advertising and promotion. So the message of the rich is the one that gets more exposure. Wealth becomes political power. But I'm not trying to disparage the rich right now. I'm just saying that they can afford to be much better represented politically than the lower economic classes in a large-scale society. However, Igora changes all of that. This is Igora. Igora is the worldwide stock market of ideas. And what is amazing about Igora is that by using the technology of a stock market for ideas, not for corporations and money, we're able to recreate that same dynamic that people have in small societies in very large societies. In other words, the same way that people can communicate and connect in a small group where everyone's voice is pretty much equal, we can do that in a group of any size by applying the stock market theory to organizing information. But actually, this is even better than uh, the democracy of that original town hall meeting. Using a stock market for ideas actually turns everyone who uses it into a political philosopher. Basically, it makes people smarter. It makes people more rational and more informed. Okay, that's a huge claim to make, but I'll show you how that is the case. So let's keep going. After we click to enter, we get the login and registration screen. There's a lot of important conceptual information on the screen. Actually, all of the screens we will be looking at today have a lot of important conceptual information. But this video is a quick start video, and for now, I just want to show you the big picture. However, for those of you who want to know a lot more in detail, I plan to make more videos that explain everything later. So definitely subscribe for that. But this is the user agreement. It is very short and simple. 
It is intended to protect us all. It is essentially the constitution of Igora. Now, the registration uh, form is also very simple. It asks for your name, which has to be your real name, but it is up to you what form of your name you use. For example, you can use just your first name or just your last name or first name and last name and so on. Ne next, Igora asks for your nation. This is important because your nation are the people that you want to work with to control your government. To keep things simple right now, basically just say what feels right and you can change it later if you have to. And of course, you have to provide your email address and create a password. After you register, you will have to confirm your email address. Now, I'm just going to log in with my own personal account. Okay, we're inside of Igora. Here in the menu bar, we see six different main screens. Igora, Home, Users, Indexes, Meetings, Campaigns, and an Account Management screen. Now, we start out on the Agora screen, which is a very important rallying point in the Agora. Remember how Agora asks for your nation? Well, here we see the different nations in Agora. But specifically, these are the nations of the members of the International Logic Party. According to how many members there are from each nation. When you uh, first register, you are not yet declared as a member of the International Logic Party. You can do that later from the home screen if you want to. But that's why you might not see your nation reflected here. Only ILP members are listed here because we're using the Agora for official political purposes. Uh, but all of the users, both ILP members and non-members, are counted here in Agora users. And just in case you get tired of listening to me, you can open this letter of introduction from Igora Administrator, which also gives you a pretty good overview of the Igora. But if you're still with me, let's keep going. The next screen is the home screen. This is all about you. Well, actually, this is my home screen, so this is all about me. But this is where you express yourself philosophically and politically by building your ideological profile. The ideological profile is your existential, political, economic, social, and personal philosophy. It is a set of ideas that most closely represent your thoughts. But th this is not just any set of ideas. You see here, these ideas are actually structured in a very specific format, going from 23 down to 1. And again, from 0, 23 to 0, 1. I'm not going to explain the zero point ideas right now, but 23 is basically the most points that you can give to an idea and one is the least. This structure incentivizes the user to logically build their ideas on top of one another, from the most fundamental ideas to the most derivative ideas. Basically, it makes people look at things more rationally. But hey, you can look at my ideological profile and decide for yourself if you think it's organized rationally. Another thing you will notice here is that ideas have two main types of relevance. You see, some ideas like, uh, like these here, these are universal ideas. Uh, this means that they, they can be created and shared by all of the Agora users from any nation. But some ideas like this one here, they are national ideas. My nation is USA, and so this idea is specific to my nation. By clicking this open button, I can see the idea in full. I can change how many points I give to it. I can remove it from my ideological profile completely. And when we exit, I can of course create new ideas by clicking uh, this button here. Now by having these ideas in my ideological profile, I'm giving them these points point values, 23 down to 1. But I'm not the only person doing that. My ideas are also shared by other people. And so other people are also giving points to these ideas. And here in this field, uh, you can see the total number of points that an idea has from all of the Agora users. They are called IDI points. IDI is short for Idea Dominance Index. Real quick, this is the user screen. Uh, here you can search for other Igora users if they want you to find them. 
Also, here you can keep track of people whose philosophies you find interesting. For example, this is Taras Khreniv. His company, Walton Street Web Design, is supporting the Igora website by hosting it, and he has some great ideas. And I say that because we support nearly all of the same ideas. Okay, here we have the Idea Dominance Index. The IDI is the flagship function of Igora. This is the meeting ground of all ideas, but specifically it is a listing of ideas according to how many points a particular idea has. Now to generate the IDI, we have to specify the relevance category of those ideas. This means that we have to specify if we want to look at just our own nation's ideas, or just the universal ideas, or various combinations. In this video, I want to show you all categories except Igora, and I click Generate. So here we are. These are all of the universal and national ideas that Igora users support. There's quite a lot, and there are quite a bit of really great ideas here. But these ideas are organized from most strongly to least strongly supported. And this idea here is right now the number one idea in the world. It has this many points from this many supporters. This idea is in second place. It has this many points from this many supporters, and so on. You get what's going on here. Now, why is this important? This is important for two reasons. The first reason is that this allows us, the people, to have a really clear idea of what people think and why. But remember, this is not just some opinion poll with pre-formulated leading questions. This is people's carefully articulated, time-tested, and integrated philosophies. When you begin to read these ideas in detail, you will see how this is the body of the collective human political wisdom. And we can use this wisdom as a basis of comparison to judge what our governments are doing versus what we demand from them. The second reason that the idea dominance index is important is related to this final function here, campaigns. So we're going to skip the meetings function for a moment. Igora is ultimately a tool for the International Logic Party to organize itself, including the nomination of political candidates. So here in this campaign screen, we're able to use a very simple or algorithm to actually create political candidates who most closely represent the ideas of the people. So for example, I'm going to announce myself as a candidate to be the head of state of my nation, which is President of the United States of America. Now just to clarify, I do not actually want to be President of the USA but I'm going to use myself as an example. Anyways, I have announced myself as a candidate. And then I type in my nation. And then I click generate. And here we have it. This is the list of candidates for the International Logic Party nomination to be the president of the USA. Okay, I guess I'm the only one. But hey, we need candidates. We need real leaders to step up for every nation. Anyway, the essential thing is that this list is based on how closely these candidates support the ideas of the people in the Idea Dominance Index. Based on which ideas I have in my ideological profile and how many points those ideas have on the Idea Dominance Index, this score is calculated. So using the IDI, we're not just finding out what the people want. We can also find people who will actually make happen what, what the people want. Basically, this campaign's function is like a factory assembly line of ideal political candidates. Even if one of them fails us, we will have a, a whole list of people who are ready to replace them. Now, what's really awesome about this is that this actually makes the whole system incorruptible. And the expla explanation for this is that, yeah, someone could potentially cheat the system get to the top of the list, and maybe even get elected into office. But the important thing is that even if someone did do that, which is extremely unlikely, the point is that they cannot make a career out of cheating the system. They cannot make a career out of being dishonest politicians the way that politicians do it now. And that's basically because, because it is simply not worth their time. In the system, it is not worth the time of dishonest people to go into politics. And that's because for all of the time and effort they might put into cheating the system, the system will simply replace them with someone else in the next election, someone better. So if, if the International Logic Party politicians fail the people in any way, they are finished forever. We simply have, well, we will have too many other good people waiting in line on the list. 
Okay, one more thing I have to add is to clarify that this function to nominate candidates still has to be significantly developed. You can read about that here in the guide. Basically, software costs money, and we could really use some more of it. You know what I mean. So now, you understand how the stock market technology works with ideas. But we skipped over one essential feature, the meetings function. And this is actually the heart of the system. See, if you recall from the beginning, the whole point of all of this technology is to help people communicate in a citizen democracy on a large scale. Not to do away with it, but to enhance it. So the way that this technology is meant to be used is in real life meetings of the people. And what we have here is a way for Igora users to, uh, to organize and find out about various meetings of the International Logic Party happening around the world. So let's see what we have here. We have some meetings in Poland, Wrocław, on this date. This is the meeting that I'm personally organizing, and that's it at the moment for real life meetings. But of course, if you're willing and able, you can schedule some meetings yourself to discuss Igora ideas with other people in your hometown. However, we also have this, Igora Society Continuous Global Meeting, which is happening in a Facebook group at this web address. I have this link open in this tab, so let me show you. The purpose of this Facebook group is specifically so that Igora users from around the world can connect with one another to exchange ideas whenever and wherever it is convenient for them. Yes, Igora should actually be used in person, but for those who might not have that opportunity right now, you can join the rest of us in this group. Here you can post your ideas and promote them. You can discuss them with others to explain them or develop them. And of course you can learn about other people's ideas and communicate with them. So there you have it folks, this is what Igora is about. Uh, but I just want to wrap this up with a few closing thoughts. First, using Igora is real political work. This is not just talking about ideas. This is people making individual decisions about specific ideas. Yes, these are individual decisions, and if we look at them in isolation from one another, they mean very little in the gigantic political environment. But we are not looking at them in isolation from one another. The purpose of Igora is to collect and aggregate all of those individual decisions and show everyone, everyone what the people think together. Second, when you really think about what we do here, Igora does not require us to do any more work than we should already be doing as responsible citizens. What do I mean by that? Okay, tell me if you disagree on any one of these points. As a responsible citizen, you should be, number one, developing your political philosophy. This is important so that you can judge whether your country is on the proper course or not. You should have your own political philosophy so that you have a base of comparison to what the pol politicians are telling you. Number two, as a responsible citizen, you should publish your political philosophy. There are two reasons for this. If you have done a good job developing your uh, political philosophy, please share it with the rest of us so we can learn from you. It is only to your advantage if you make other citizens smarter. And the second reason is that if you did not do a good job, or if you made mistakes in your political philosophy, other responsible citizens can help you improve it. And the explanation here is the same as for the first reason. Other responsible citizens want to help you with your political philosophy because that helps us. And number three, as a responsible citizen, you should be meeting and communicating with other responsible citizens because that's how we share ideas with one another. I mean, there is really no way around that. So you see, these three things that we should already be doing as responsible citizens, this is exactly what we do with Igora. The difference is that through Igora, we're able to organize and manage that information way more efficiently and way more effectively than it was ever possible before. Now the third and final thought I want to leave you with here uh, is that this is the real deal. You actually have real political power here and everything you do counts. We hope that you will actively use Igora, that you will engage others to discuss your ideas, that you will organize international logic party meetings, and maybe even that you will become a candidate of the International Logic Party. Seriously, we hope you will rise up to this challenge because it is time for us, the people, 
to take control of our governments. But even if you just use Igora to express yourself and share ideas with others, you will greatly contribute to our community. But if for whatever reason you're not ready to do any of that, then please at least like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share this video on Facebook or other social media. Because maybe this video will get to someone else, and maybe you will help us make, make a new leader. Maybe you will help us find the next president of your country. Thank you for watching. Welcome to the democratic evolution. The R is silent. And see you in the Agora. That was awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and like that right away. Ka plink. All righty. Three likes and a comment. Thanks for watching. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing. Heck yeah. All right. We got a comment up there. Um, thank you. Goodness, Cesare. I mean, <clears throat> All right, I just got to say something to Nolan really quick. Hey, Nolan. I told you so. I tease Nolan sometimes because I predicted that through this process, we would attract amazing people, right? If I were an artist, I couldn't have painted you, Cesare, and I'm so happy you're here. You are exactly what we're looking for. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I was, I was looking for you guys too. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. No, no, no. We, we see. We knew. We knew. I knew that James Desmond and Cork Ireland existed. I knew Miles existed. I knew. I knew Cesare. Cesare existed. Emery, etc. All of us. But we're like, how do we find these people who are working on different aspects of collective intelligence? And then it was as if a coconut fell from a tree cracked my head open. The coconut was fine. Nancy, no coconuts were hurt in the making of this joke. Um, and it was just like, wow, let's throw a block party. It was actually um, Charlie Blass's idea that we, I mean, he came up with the term collective intelligence block party. We had come up with the concept. We said, hey, let's just have some big meeting where we bring everyone together. And he said, yeah, like a collective intelligence block party. That was the coconut falling on the, on the head. And uh, anyway, I'm just so psyched. Whew, we were all looking for each other. So welcome home, brother, or welcome me into your home or whatever the analogy, but uh, I'm just so psyched. I don't even know where to begin. So I'm gonna shut up because I'm just, I could go on and on. Um, but my goodness. Um, looks like we got some comments in the meantime. Let me just read through those. Um, uh, let's see, we should plug Igora into our collective intellig collective super intelligence um, ring central group. Totally agree. Plug it in there. I'm still not active on ring central. I, I got to sort out, I think, wires crossed with Nolan or something like that, but we'll, we'll get that all sorted out. And that, and actually this gets to, um, I could just go on and on. I don't even know where to begin. I'm just so psyched. But this is, whew. anyway, one of the things I'll do at some point is share another visual and kind of some of the latest thinking on um, collective superintelligence that we've been cooking up. But I totally agree with you, Cesare. These two, I mean, like Igora takes us so far um, into what we've been wanting to achieve. So I, I want to start, you know, using Igora and actually get the whole block party using Igora. And then also invite the whole Igora community to the block party or specific meetings within the block party so that we create, um, heck, let's just change the name of the block party to the International Logic Party. And there you have it. The consolidation is complete. But you get what I'm saying. Let's, you know, let's, let's bring this community together in a 24-hour international town hall, right? Dude, I'd love that, man. You know, but sliced up into different topics, right? See, this is how the lily pads are connecting. This is exactly the idea, right? Yeah. And then Kiko Lab in Switzerland, Paris, 
come on, hook up with us, right? Get on Agora, come to the block party, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, you want us to come to some of your meetings? Great. Let's create this universal calendar. That's one of the things that's, that's essential. So if we could get programmatic access to your calendar, all the meetings that are public, obviously, right? Merge them with our calendar, with Vegan World 2026, with Kiko Lab, with, you know, to quote Melissa's grandfather, Howard Koch, who wrote Casablanca, Let's round up the usual suspects and the unusual suspects. That's uh, Jamin Shively's addition to Howard Koch's quote at the end of Casablanca. Anyway, uh, as I've been promising for minutes now, I will shut up and let other people share because I'm sure others are excited as well. So share away. And if there's a queue, I'll manage the queue. Uh, but no queue at the moment, so just jump in. Hey guys, Jeff in Baja, can you hear me okay? Hey, Jeff. Yes, sir. Great to, great to see you, hear you, and uh, rock on. Yo, Jeff, now it's great to see you. I'm still on the Agora site at the moment. Um, I'm putting in information to register myself under Mexico, but it says there is no nation for Mexico in the group of nations, I guess. Does that need to be added? Uh, that means you're creating one. That's what I thought I was doing, but it wouldn't. I, I, maybe I did something wrong. So maybe uh, when you have some time aside, we can walk me through this or... Uh, no, well, uh, it's it, you. You don't select. We don't tell people what their nation is because I mean, maybe it's Mexico or maybe it's tribal. Well, actually, actually, no. Mexico is spelled Mexico the way that it's spelled in English, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. But but see, but the point of that is we're not organizing uh, the groups in Igora by countries. We're organizing okay, them fine. by nations, and people can freely identify what their nations are. So for example, people living in the country of Spain, maybe they don't want to say their nation is, is Spain. Maybe they want to say it's Catalonia, or maybe they want to say it's Europe. Uh, so, or people, you know, I, maybe in the United States, maybe people don't want to say their nation is USA. Maybe they want to say it's Texas. And maybe they actually want to strive for an independent country of Texas. I mean, the point is that the people have the freedom to do that. Or maybe they don't want to say their nation is USA because maybe they want to say it's North America because maybe they want to create, you know, a, a, a union uh, among all the countries in, in North what, America. What about, what about tribal? What's that? What about tribal nations? Well, exactly. They might want to say it's Navajo instead of USA. But I much rather would, actually. And that's what we should all actually focus on doing, kind of what we're doing here with Living Hope and Live Hope and so forth. We're well, Indigenous. Well, but the, but the question is, because it's only going to make sense to identify yourself as Navajo if you're Navajo, if, if you're trying to build a country of Navajo, is if okay. you're going to make land claims for the Navajo nation and actually with complete sovereignty. Because at that point, because if you're still within the jurisdiction of another sovereignty, then you're better off identifying yourself within that higher sovereignty. Um, so, yeah, so... So that's why kind of I just generalized Mexico for now. I'm not even saying Baja or, or any generalized area or state within Mexico. I'm just saying Mexico. Um, but it wouldn't let me go to the next point. It kept saying there is no nation of Mexico. Um, I no, I was creating one because I just registered. I just got my confirmation email. So I logged in and now I'm going what I thought was step one of registering a nation. Jeff, you may want to screen share. Um, I could, I guess, yeah. Um, I've never zoomed screen share. Let me see. But so you said you were able to register then. So then, then oh, no, I registered. I, I'm in. I'm logged in as Jeff Lewis. And let me see real quick. Yeah, everything's there. Password change, privacy settings. Okay. Um, so, anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take your guys' time up with this right now. I'm just anxious to see if I can get this started up for something here in Mexico. And people can have where places to vote and put their opinions in and uh, resources and everything you just talked about that just sounds amazing yeah it was, and and so yeah so you can create ideas for mexico for for your nation or universal ideas you know i i invite all i always say i invite and challenge you to look at my ideological profile i have some i mean the reason why i created this system was because i had a lot of ideas and i realized that you could i could make my philosophy modular I could put all of my ideas into one book and I try to could sell the book. But what if somebody's not ready to buy the whole book? Maybe out of a hundred ideas that I'm offering, they're only interested in just like three. And so, so if I make it modular, they can just take 
those few ideas and adopt them into their philosophy, they could start using them. And if those ideas are working for them, then they might say, well, hey, these ideas were good that this guy gave me. Maybe I should go back to him for some more ideas. And so, so yeah, by making philosophy. Yeah, do you, this was do, a do you know Brett? Do you know Brett? No. Warshawski, Brett Warsha Warshawski of um, Infinite World Games, of New Map. New Map. Yeah. Anyway, he'll probably be on in a few hours. Well, these, these two need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> I just got off. I, I didn't get off with Brett, but I was just chatting with him on Ring Central. He's going to bed. So tomorrow, his time, we'll be able to talk. He'll be on, I'm sure, with you guys in the morning. So we'll see if I can get up at four or five or six and join you. Um, but uh, these two need to talk. Um, I, I, I need your his, his email address. I need your email address, please. Um, how do you pronounce it, your name correctly? Cesari? Cesari. Cesari. Uh, if you yeah. could send your email address or just post it in the chat here, I'll invite you into Ring Central. I've already created a group there for this. Um, I've already put the uh, your link up for the uh, website so people can start checking it out and we can start kind of uh, figure out how we're going to tool this into what we're doing. Well, we, need, we need things that we can do now, and this sounds like something we can be using now. And people's opinions are very important right now, especially with what's going on. People are freaking out. They've got ideas, so let's just get people focused on, like you said, one or two or three ideas at most. That's about, about as much as they can handle at the moment. You know, you know, and you make an, you bring up an interesting point, and this is something that I ran into because, uh, uh, because again, like I think globally, but most people have a very difficult time understanding like the magnitude of how many people there are in the world and how and and how oh, how yeah. difficult it is to actually process all of that information um and, but also how easy it is to if you know the if you know the what i don't want to say weak points but if you know the pressure points within a certain population how well how there are certain strategies that you can use to grow even something that's new or that's radical you can still uh grow it relatively quickly so yeah there there are both obstacles but what i'm trying to say is that uh people might introduce some ideas and think like oh yeah i introduced this idea i've done my part but no you need to tell people about your idea if you think you have a good idea tell others and then when you actually present your idea to other people when you start hearing their feedback that's going to let you know like whether your idea is actually good and then you will really see how far uphill you have to go for your idea to get up there for uh you know like it's not enough that you just talk to two people or three people and you expect your idea to take off um you might need to talk to a lot more people and then those people have to talk to more people if it is a good idea it actually will do that it will grow exponentially really quickly um but so the point is is that some people you know because people have introduced different kinds of ideas like different versions of ideas that are already there and they think they're doing their part by just saying you know let's say spewing whatever comes to their mind without really thinking it through and then you know and then they might think like, oh, well, this isn't working because, but maybe your idea isn't really that good, you know, because you have to think like, there are billions of people out there. So like, if, if you, here, here's what I'm trying to say. If you have 10 people. Boy, Jamin, Jamin's biting at the bit, man. He wants to say something. <laughs> no, I, just real quick. But no, I'm just saying, absolutely. I'm just watching Jamin right now. He's just going nuts. <laughs> if you have 10 people among them, you might have a hundred ideas. If you increase that number to uh, to a hundred people, then you might have a thousand ideas. Right. But then, if you increase that number to uh, a thousand people, you're only going to ma maybe have now two or three hundred ideas. You know, it's a logarithmic scale because people actually have similar have, ideas. People share a lot of ideas. Right. Well, we're all picking it up off the ether. Some are more in tune than others. You know, we're all, these ideas have been floating around forever. We just got to pick up on them. But what I'm, well, what I'm, what I'm really interested in, what you got now is, is, is coring out what we're trying to do here. So we've got a lot of people involved with a lot of ideas, a lot of groups, and a lot of projects, most of which are unfunded or un, unresourced for what they need right now. So I'm not sure if you're up to speed with what's been going on with the, like the Live Hope Project, for instance, um, Living Hope Project, which is the making of Live Hope, people who did Live Aid. Um, that in and of itself is a whole thing. I can do a whole show on it, but 
within that, there are core groups of people trying to work and coordinate things together right now where we're talking with big money, we've got big resources, we've got land, we've got, you know, all the, the, the pieces we need. We need to organize it now. And we need to get everybody's, like your thing does, get people's ideas and opinions so, so everybody's heard, nobody's ignored. And we get all the ones that have the same idea, obviously, and we pull those and sharpen those down, and then more same idea, sharpen those and focus down, and starting with one to two, three things max, and get those knocked out. So we can show the rest of the model, how we built it, how we did it, and show the making of it, show the whole process of it, and, and you know, the bumps and the, and the laughs and everything. Um, like what I'm trying to do with the BioVita technology, I've not been really pushing too much on everybody at the moment because I want to just get one built so I can show people because it's great to talk about these cool dome technologies and pyramid technologies and all this cool shit and hempcrete and things like that. But until it's actually real and somebody can touch it, it's not, it's just an idea, you know, like you're saying. Not that this guy hasn't built these all over the planet already and very successfully, this stuff's just going crazy. But people generally don't get it. So we need to work with the ones that do, like Jamin's doing. I see you, Jamin. <laughs> oh, no, I, I was just waving at Evan. And since he was oh, okay. on the side, I, I, I was okay. trying to harmonize. Yeah, no, but carry on, Jeff. But uh, um, what, what, you know, like with this block party, is from this block party, I'm pulling key people out that I see as movers and shakers and ones that want not afraid to put their boots on the ground and get muddy and pick up a shovel um, over to ring central. And then from there, I'm honing those teams down for who's not going to pick up a shovel because they're tech and they just don't do that. And tech is what they're supposed to do. And that's what they're going to do. So we put them into tech groups. Um, and I will keep you abreast of each one of those Jamin. So you can discuss how that's progressing on these block party groups and then start bringing some of these hosts of these groups in as we approve it, of course, to this public block party to inspire more people to come on board that we're getting focus here, even in the midst of this coronavirus bullshit, because there's gonna be another fucking virus after this and another fucking virus. We've dealt with millions of viruses. We're exposed to millions of viruses all the time. This is just one big scare tactic, but it is doing something really positive. For one, it's reduced emissions dramatically fast and people are at home with themselves now and they're kind of going stir crazy because they're so used to being out in the world busy. They don't know what to do with time on their hands. And they should be planting gardens, putting seeds in the ground, collecting stuff that's blooming right now and, you know, drying it and so forth. But anyways, I'm getting off track. So the, the, the ring central, because that's just what we're using for now. It may be something else if somebody finds something better that, you know, we may have to pay for. Trello is part of it. So we're using Trello because that way we can task teams and put people to jobs. So, and these, these are, this is things that people won't have to go anywhere. They, you'll do your job at home. And you'll contribute what you've done and what you've learned and what you've experienced and how you've gained knowledge on things like, you know, this block party, for instance, to the world, to inspire others to, to do the same thing. So we can actually create communities within ourselves because we already have our friends and neighbors next to us. They're all sitting in the house, too. It's like, well, if we don't, if we're not sick, why aren't we mingling with each other? We should be out doing gardens together. You know, so I'm going to be doing a uh, El Jardin team down here in Mexico for gardens and one in the States for anybody that wants to do now time gardens put seeds in the ground yesterday to now right now start planting seeds people that have seed banks you know start you know uh logging your seeds we're going to do seed packs for people so we can send you a whole seed pack a little kombucha baby so you can start making kombucha mushroom by the way the kombucha knocks out the bugs as well because if you heal the gut your immune system's at peak you can fight off any virus bacteria mold, mold fungus yeast cancer whatever um, kombucha is magic and if you can grow the stuff yourself and all you have to do is buy cheap ass sugar to make it and some green tea bags, which you can eventually grow yourself, you're making the remedy to keep yourself healthy in the midst of any viral outbreak, any strain outbreak, any bioweaponry attack, with it, unless it's gas, of course, you're going to need a suit. <laughs> but other than that, you know, you'll be good. Even the sick people right now, most of their problem, the reason they're getting sick from this virus is because their gut is so out of balance. And kombucha fixes that rather quickly. And when you make it yummy, it tastes really good. <laughs> So we're going to be blowing out the hell out of kombucha right now. We're going to be talking about kombucha a lot and sending out kits. If you guys want one, I'll, I'll plug you into Norman G. Baker of Norman G. Baker Enterprises in Malibu. He lives in what's called the White House. The front of his house looks like the White House. It's a small little mansion of his. He's a trust baby, but he's been able to do a lot of good for a lot of people. So he will send you a kombucha kit for free, mail postage included. And from that, you can start babies and give them to your neighbors. And those things just double every seven, eight days. You're making, you know, babies giving them away and you can cut them into pieces and make small ones too and they still make a whole new thing so this stuff never ends and then when you're done with it put it in your garden give it to your dogs your cats it, it, it heals them and keeps them healthy because by the way our pets do carry the coronavirus too fyi anyway. coronavirus has been around a while mm. 
Well, I, I can certainly attest to what Jeff is saying since my mom made kombucha for years. And every time I'd go home, I'd start off with a big old glass of kombucha. Love the stuff. And she would swear by it. Anyway, um, so let's get back. Uh, Jeff, I love everything you're saying. And I could listen to you for hours. Um, and I'm uh, done. I'm off my, my uh, box here. I just wanted to mention that <laughs> Ring Central, let's, let's get this guy at, at, at this thing with uh, Igora definitely needs to be over part of Ring Central. And anybody at that level, you know, I'll plug those two in touch with Brett so tomorrow those two can talk. Um, I've got some core meetings with Josh, our other guy of Gaia Solutions coming in. Um, I would like you to have a private chat with him as well um, to see where we're at so we can start modeling the stuff and getting boots on the ground and, and getting, you know, resources and helping people and getting excited. So, so Jeff, here's what I'd love to do. Um, I'd love to get the best folks from your community and schedule them to, you know, to, to lead conversations right here on the block party. If they're one of those super busy people and all they can spare is 15 minutes, fine. Let, let, let me get, let me get Gunther Pauly on here. B bring them on, bring them on, Jeff, bring all the peeps that you want because they're going to love you for it. Why? Because they get to meet people like Cesare and Brett Warchowski <laughs> and, and, and literally everyone on here and Jeff himself. Woo. You know, so, I mean, and and same same homework for you, Chazari. The best idea, folks, that you've got in your in your community that are just like smoking. Because he, here's 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 the here's the grand marriage of concepts, right? Um, is we have the power of structured information that's tagged and scored and socialized, a la Chazari, right? Um, what do you call it again? Igora, Igora. Okay. So you got the, the structured ideas a la Igora and, and I'll screen share in a, in, a, in a couple of minutes here and show some more structure that we can add to it. But basically structured data, it's all data. I don't care if it's pages long, it's data. You have structured data, which can now be married with perfectly transcribed conversations. We haven't gotten there yet with the perfect transcription, but we will. And in the mean, and one of my core philosophies, and Jeff, just give me a high five if you agree with me on this. Anything that's worth doing is worth doing half-assed. In other words, better to do it half-assed than not do it at all. Better to have a half-assed dinner than no dinner at all, right? Better to squeeze your cat half-assed, tell him tell you love him, than not to touch him at all, et cetera. Um, so we then, anyway, so so perfection, forget it, but we'll we'll just... Perfection is the enemy of the good. Let's go with good. So we now bring in conversations, perfectly transcribed conversations, mashed up with structured data. Okay. Let's just keep that simple visual in mind. And then sooner rather than later, I'm going to screen share some stuff. Um, but I wanted to give an opportunity for some of the folks who haven't spoken and are a little bit shy at the mic. So let's all be quiet. <laughs> let the big talkers, including Jamin, be quiet for a moment, and uh, let a couple other folks get some get some thoughts in, or everyone else. And then I'll screen, I'll get ready to screen share in a moment. <laughs> I think people are pretty blown away, <laughs> but anyway, just jump in um, while I pull up something to screen share because I can't see you now because I'm working on the screen share thing. So just jump in. Yeah, I'll jump in there uh, for a second, Jim, and if you don't mind. Not at all. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's fantastic. They all know the, with Cesare as a parent still tonight, like, because um, I think it's the answer to the fro all the frustrations of week five, really, um, to be honest with you, because everybody has their ideas and everybody wants, you know, just everybody has a sense of urgency and wants to proceed, proceed, proceed. But, you know, we need the numbers and we need the ideas. And so, as I said earlier, like in my quick rant earlier on, on the tail end of it, I think that, um, you know, as I said, we humans, oh, sorry. Can you mute that, Jamin? Oh, yeah, yeah. Who, who's, where's it coming from? Eddie, Eddie Nolan. Eddie, okay, I got him. Eddie's been, been muted. Sorry, I was on another screen. Okay, go, go, go ahead, James. All right, sorry. Yeah, no, I was just saying that um, 
I, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there, no, but all I'm saying is it's a brilliant idea because we had been getting frustrated about introductions and uh, like we all have to get used to each other, get involved, you know, get into conversations, introductions, but we all have a sense of urgency about getting on with the uh, ideas and everything else. So this is just, you know, a fantastic platform for everybody to, you know, put it, their input into this platform put it straight into the collective here as well as your kind of introduction, as I was saying earlier. So, you know, it gives it, it's your kind of introduction to the um, collective and it automatically places you in a loop of similar minds then straight away with the collective conversations that are going on. As you've just been saying there, it's just, it just fits so perfectly. Like it's fantastic. Beautiful, James. Thank you. E Emery's got his hand up to share. Go ahead, Emery. Yeah, thanks, Jan. I have a question for Cesare. Um, I wanted to ask you, when, when you do um, register and you, uh, I guess you create your profile and, uh, you know, you start uh, listing your ideas or uh, you know, however you want to categorize uh, your, your thoughts on issues and uh, problems, um, is there... I mean, it has to be viewed by another participant, right? I mean, it doesn't just automatically feed into uh, into uh, other people's uh, other participants uh, in preview, you know. So, so what I'm wondering is, you know, will there be enough people to bring up? your uh stack up the uh the uh, um the concerns you know that you present you have to have a lot of people that want to get involved that will want to actually read what you put down on your profile where you where you start i guess where you engage where you try to engage people right i mean Facebook is, is a place where you try to engage people, right? I, I, I mean, with my experience in that, I mean, I put a number of concerns and things and I want people to engage, but, you know. Emery, can I interject super quick? And then you, if you want to say more, say more, but I think I got this one. Basically, you're talking about the chicken and egg problem, right? How do you get an engaged community with substantial critical mass of people using it, et cetera, et cetera? If you don't have a critical mass of users, what's the utility? If that's your question, I totally get it. And we're all trying to save the same, solve the same problem here. And I think we're solving it beautifully. Bringing together Chazari with the block party, with Brett, with Jeff, with you, with all of us together. This is the cauldron. And, you know, add in a, a few more Jeffs, a few more Chazaris, a few more Emerys, a few more Lesses, a few more... Nancy's a few more everybody and wow this stew is this stone soup is going to taste delicious so anyway I'm just saying we'll get there Emery I, I just don't want to go down I, I, I just don't want to task Chazari with something that for me is super clear but back to you guys I don't mean it. I don't want to interrupt no problem uh, I, I, well, you know I see the video the video aspect of it being incorporated uh, that's great you know but we will need we'll need a lot of that a thousand highways. Yeah, and but it's but you see the key point, Emery, is we're bringing together all these crucial pieces better together, right? And yeah. we're all meeting at the Grand Central Station called the Friday Saturday Block Party. What better day to party, all right? Get Brett in on it for sure. <laughs> totally, we and we'll get Brett in on there. All right, Nancy has her hand raised. Was there anyone? Miles, I think was. Uh, Miles, I think you were before Nancy, but let me verify, or if one of you can solve that for me. No, I think Miles had his hand up, and then Miles, and then Nancy. Go ahead, Miles. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Cesare. That's fantastic work you've done. Put a lot of effort into that. Obviously, um, I really love it because um, I was. Back in 2015, I was actively involved in a political party where I live. I'm in Canada. It was a provincial party. And 
what happened was, um, you know, people who are actively engaged at the constituency level, they, they get people who are nominated to go to a, like, a, I guess they call it a policy creation uh, selection uh, uh, meeting, convention sort of thing. And, and every constituency gets to craft various policy statements that it wants the, the whole party to consider, you know, the provincial wide party to say, okay, yeah, we're gonna take that and put it into our platform. So what happened was there was this really great declaration of, of making the party, because there was some really serious indiscretions and abuse of power in the past, there was a constituency that crafted a beautiful declaration of democratic principles. And I was actually digging around trying to find it. I have a copy somewhere. But what happened was um, they ran out of time, you know? So people like me actually was like really excited that we we're gonna get to kick this around, present it and then vote on it. But it never even made it, saw the light of day. And then another thing, they said, well, we're going to have another meeting. And then that never happened for some reason or other. And this thing was lost. Um, so your system will not, will prevent that from happening. Great, great ideas would be preserved. They would, there is, there's no shortage of time that they go, they would be this thing that I'm describing would have been posted into the stock market of ideas and it would be there for a long time for everybody to see. And, you know, when it comes to some of these things that I just described, you have to really wonder if some of it's manipulation, that they just, some of these things they're going to try to, you know, we don't want to have that. It's just too darn democratic, you know? So um, anyway, great work. Um, there's an organization that I was part of. Uh, I didn't, unfortunately, get to do too much, but um, the University, Ryerson University in Toronto has a, an organization, the Ryerson University, promoting uh, people to become engaged voters, to be involved in the political process. So I'm sure there's probably faculties, universities all around the world that are similar to this group who are all about democratic engagement exchange, faculty of arts. Um, another gentleman that uh, I actually was lucky, I won this in a draw, but it's called Teardown, Rebuilding Democracy from the Ground Up, Dave Meslin. And uh, Dave Meslin is a force of nature, a one man think tank pressure group who won't stop until he sees his ideas for a better democracy put in action. Now he is Canadian, but he does have a lot of American examples of grassroots democratic um, you know, democracy actions because yeah, we are at a point where this, these systems that we've had, whether it's Canada, the United States, other nations, which haven't changed, these governance systems that haven't changed in hundreds of years, and we still think that just going every four years to pick some rabbit out of a hat and put them in charge is adequate. It's not. We have to get these ideas. So kudos to you. Um, thank you very much. I will look forward to exploring it more. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Miles. Um, Chazari, if you have immediate feedback or anything, jump in. Otherwise, I can pass it to Nancy. Um, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, really, everyone. Uh, I was just writing up a comment, but I guess I'll just say it. Uh, the the point is is that uh, this system really requires and it rewards rationality. Um, it's in a way it's kind of a flaw of that system uh, because especially potentially uh, I mean if you have enough capital to push it you know if you have money enough money to promote it to get a, a critical mass going then it's then it takes off on its own steam. But but at this stage, me being let's just say a poor street philosopher. I don't have massive capital to, to do that, but I think there are still ways to do it. Anyways, the point is, is that it really requires people to, uh, to be reasonable. And what that means is people have to be willing to compromise. If you, are you willing to, uh, 
Are you going to be stubborn about 100% of everything you want with about 0.000% chance of, uh, one, uh, 1 chance of getting it? Or are you willing to compromise maybe 10% or 20% of what you want to get 80%? And, and frankly, that's not a bad compromise when the politicians are currently giving you about 30% of what you, what the people really want. So, so yeah, it's, but yeah, but, it, but people have to be willing to do that. And what that means by compromise is, you know, and the question was raised that, yeah, when you introduce ideas, nobody, right, nobody knows about them because you're supposed to do the work of promoting your ideas. I mean, yeah, it's, this is not Facebook where you just spew stuff and you just post stuff and you expect the world to, to applaud you for it. No, you if, if you think you have a good idea and it's worth actually writing, well, first of all, there's probably already a better idea there. Frankly, as soon as we get a critical mass of people, there are already going to be really good ideas already articulated there. Uh, so do you really have to write a new idea? Okay, maybe you want to. And actually, I, the, the part I didn't explain in the video is that you actually have to, this is all based on human DNA and biology. Like, the, it's, it's all symbolic. There, you have 46 ideas, but it's actually two lists of 23 ideas. You have 23 ideas that are 23 to 1, and then you have 23 ideas that are 0, 23 to 0, 1. And it's all based on dominant and recessive genetics. Uh, and so that actually facilitates the evolution of ideas. And, and so, yeah, if you, if you want to show that you support the popular idea, but also create your own version of that idea, you can do that. The system allows you to do that. It even rewards you for it. Um, but but the point is that yeah it, the people who can compromise who can reach a compromise they're the ones who win and generally those are reasonable people and that's this is supposed to give an advantage to reasonably thinking people well so sorry quick question on the position what does that exactly mean zero to 23 and one to 23. well there are many different ways that you could do that i, I use that uh because if you are the uh, the main the original idea behind that was that if the algorithm when it creates a list of political candidates each person has 46 ideas uh but you can only give ideas to uh, give points to 23 of those ideas and when you're a political candidate uh, your score is calculated based on the top 23 ideas out of the 46. so you can use some of your ideas to show you can potentially get points from any 46 ideas that you have but you can only give points to only 23 of those. Well, it asked, uh, me, it asked me to submit a point or, or an action with a point chart. I just put one on, on either one of them. But when I noticed one idea went out with one, that part was taken. So another new idea had to either be two positive or negative zero somewhere else because that one was taken. Uh, right, right. So you have, you have point so positions. You're building your ideas, what you're saying. You're filling all those positions up with your ideas is what you're doing. Right. So what, the question I had was, is what's the versus going positive versus going negative? They're not negative. They're not or, negative. Or zero, zero to 23. Zero. You have one to 23 they, going Basically, it's like, it's like an A list and a B list. You have the A list that's point right. weighted and then the B, B list that's not point weighted. And if you declare yourself as a political candidate, you can get points from the, uh, the, the ideas that you are giving uh, zero points to, uh, but you're not giving points to them. Basically, it, it facilitates evolution. It, okay. it, so, so how should uh, I start? Should I start at zero? I mean, does it matter what? what no, matter? no. The, the, and the zero point ideas can also be used for like alternative versions of ideas. Maybe you want to show that you support the popular idea, but you want your friends to know that you're an innovative thinker and you want to show. Or may, maybe it's just a different way of phrasing that, um, you know. But there are many different ways you can use that. It's actually really open to interpretation. There are many ways that you can use that. Or maybe you can use that as kind of like a waiting list. Like when, once, when you make more space of the point weighted ideas, then you can move some of the other ideas up. There are so many different ways you can use that. Also, the party members. Igora is essentially like a country online. And the party members are like the citizens of the country. And other people who are not declared as party members are like the residents of it. And so the party members can actually use the plat uh, use Igora ideas to control the platform. If you have an idea of what function the platform, I, well, technically, the main idea that um, the main Igora idea that party members would uh, create would be to elect a new administrator of the platform. Eventually, uh, 
we will hold elections because the question, this is a perfect system. The question is who controls the perfect system? And right now it's me because I made it because nobody else is gonna do it. Uh, but there are two ways to replace me. One is that, well, right now it's not available through the plat platform because it's not finished. It's not, I'm not finished building it. There are still more things that have to be built. But eventually the party members will be able to elect a new administrator of the platform through the platform. But the other way to replace me, and that could even happen right now, is somebody could take the code, they could say they're the leader of the party. That's actually the fourth principle of the party, is that anyone who says they're the leader, they might be the leader. They just have to do the work of being the leader, which means administering the platform. So you could take the code, you could say that you're the leader of the International Logic Party, and you could open up your own Igora, and you could make that available to, you know, to other people to use, and you're competing, your, your Igora would be competing against mine. And the, the party members would decide who is the legitimate leader based on which Igora they use. Maybe they, they want to say, hey, I, I don't like Tazari. He's corrupt. I think he's messing with the algorithm. So, you know, so, hey, screw that guy. Forget using his platform. Let's use Jeff's platform. And thereby making you the legitimate leader of the International Logic Party. So there is, and that's what the, the zero point ideas are also used for, is to actually uh, electing a new leader of, of the party. It's also to maybe, uh, yeah, basically anything, yeah, the, the party members control the platform with Igora ideas using the zero point ideas. So there is a lot that that, 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 work, uh, that works for. It's, it, thank you. Thank you, that definitely explains it. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. All righty. Well, I have a feeling we're going to really get to be, we're going to get really deep in Igora as the, as the days go by and not a moment too soon. Nancy, you've been very patient. Take it away, Nancy, if this is a good time. You're muted, Nancy. You're muted. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate this, uh, thing that you set up and it's fascinating to meet people with these really incredible ideas that I know I need to um, follow through a lot more. I've kind of been going in and out of, of focusing on, on what you're saying, but I'm just curious um, how many people here now in this meeting are vegan? Got my thumb up. Because I... Um, I know we've come together through the uh, uh, vegan, started with Vegan World 2026, and I um, feel that it's not something that we should be uh, leaving kind of off to the sidelines. And the people who aren't, I would only hope that you do as much um, research with as much passion as you have the other ideas, because together, creating a vegan world together with these ideas of how to um you know change the, our systems basically from the ground up uh because otherwise it's kind of if we keep eating and using animals it's literally pointless we um we won't survive as a species and um i i'm not going to go into all the reasons why but you know um and I'm just gonna be blunt about this. Um, at this point, with all the information that's out there, and is certainly with the exposure of Silas Rao and all of his work, it has to be the dumbest thing anybody could do would be to keep eating animals. The absolute stupidest, dumbest, ignorant, destructive, cruel, unhealthy, everything you name it thing that you can do. We really need to grasp that, and we need to grasp it now because animal agriculture is also responsible for these viruses that are going around. And um, I also think that there's a possibility of um, the government, the dark side of the government, using this as, as an opportunity to control more and to take away more of our freedoms. I think that's a very strong possibility. I don't know if anybody agrees with me with that, but um, there's something as the saying goes, fishy about it, <laughs> um, that we have not been receiving the care or the information or the things that people are getting in other countries. China has already seen a down curve in their, in their um, cases. And 
it's just very weird. I'm hearing things that can go on for months, it could go on for over a year. And that, to me, that just doesn't sound right, even, even in the situation we're in. So I think, and you know, combination, um, because we, the, you know, our, our food, you know, is, is a major way to actually control people. You can control the food source, you can control economies, and you can control people. And anyway, so I just would urge you to please, please, please look into this and consider the fact that, like I said, it's, I'm just being blunt here. <laughs> no reason not to be. And I apologize. I am not saying it to offend anybody. I, I, I really don't want to do that. Um, but it truly is like, like the totally dumbest, the dumbest thing that we could be doing at this point. So thank you very much. Awesome. Thank, thank you, Nancy. And I just want to make a little kind of orienting uh, statement here, which is, so I agree with everything that you just said, Nancy. And I just want to make a little distinction. Um, consider just two courses of action. And we went through this thought experiment a little bit ago. I think, I think I'm not sure you were on the call at that time. But I, I basically said, look, on the one hand, here's one strategy. We could just get out there and tweet and Facebook and social media, go vegan, go vegan for all these reasons, put links and all that kind of stuff. That's one strategy. A different strategy is, and I'm gonna quote a quote that I often uh, cite from Abraham Lincoln. I think, I think you were here when I mentioned that. If I had six hours to, sh to, cut, to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening the ax. So with that, paradigm in mind. Imagine that in, before going out and swinging and swinging and swinging in social media saying, go vegan, go vegan, go vegan, we take a few hours and sharpen the ax. Sharpening the ax is developing collective super intelligence, right? Well, I sharpening the ax for us is Vegan World 2026, Climb Healers and all of the work that uh, getting together for the, you know, climate, for the climate meeting that Silas had, those things to me are, this is sharpening the ax. And I think that's a really good point that you make, because I never said, let's just all go on social media and scream it out, which, which I do. But I think we definitely need some strategies. But the strategies without that, because it's also a consciousness. And, and it's something that, as someone who has completely embraced that what's behind it, it's not just a word, but there's actually literally a consciousness. And unless we embrace that, we're still acting out of the same kind of ignorance that created the problems that we're in right now. And it's vital that we really understand what that means. That's all. I'm, I'm not gonna get into here like what it means and do my, you know, just be like that. I think there's enough information that people can do that, but but like I said, it's a consciousness of how we interact with the world. What's our place in it? The, the, the sense of the humility. There's a humility there that, no, everything isn't here just for me. These beings aren't here just for me. And it's not okay to farm these animals. For one thing, there's the ethics, but now we see the devastating impacts and how we're killing ourselves with this destroying the environment, it's viruses and just so many things that are so wrong with it, that it's just the consciousness that's behind that, why um, people would do something like go vegan. So I, I agree, I, I don't think we should just be blasting things on social media you know, blindly, absolutely. But I do see that uh, Vegan World 2026 and what Silas is doing the Climate Healers is among the, the many things that are out there that are sharpening the ax every day. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, just to be clear, I totally agree with everything you're saying, okay? And I have a point I'd like to make, if, if you'll let me. Okay, all right, so here's my point. And by the way, if I say, hey, one scenario is this and one scenario is that, I'm not saying that you're doing this scenario of just going out and blasting, okay? And when I talk about sharpening the ax, um, it's certainly true. Vegan, Vegan World 2026 is a great ax sharpener for veganism. There's another one which Dr. Silas Rao himself has embraced, which is collective intelligence. And that's what we're working on here. So we're working on one part of the sharpener, and that's not to take anything away from the other parts of the sharpener. 
but it's a big complex ax and a lot and it needs sharpening on multiple sides of it and that that's really where i'm going with this right now we happen to be in a meeting about strategy and collective super intelligence and what chisari is mentioning and my my the, my bottom line punchline point nancy is for you to accomplish what you're committed to accomplishing in the world a hundred percent or as as much as it can be accomplished collective super intelligence and the evolution of collective super intelligence can be a wonderful friend to you and to your mission right and so for example and as i was listening to you i was thinking ah there's one idea there's another there's another it was almost like you're putting together a collage of ideas chisari were you hearing that like she was saying you know like humility boom i was just thinking humility Poof. there's an idea you know how do you define it how do you apply it etc cetera, etc cetera. so i would posit that everything that's coming out of every one of our mouths including myself right now is a collage of it could be represented as a as a collage of ideas now is that representation perfect i don't think anyone would argue that is it useful i would think it'd be extremely useful anyway i'm going to let chazari comment briefly on that and then uh les has his hand up and so does miles i forget who put their hand up first i think it might have been miles but i'm not sure or was it less anyway less okay less than miles thank you Thank you, Miles. And uh, Shazari, any comments before we pass it on to Les and Miles? Actually, this is the one time I didn't have a comment, I, I, but I sent a message, uh, you know, I made a comment about that. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's, uh, for those of you who aren't vegan in here, I, yeah, it is a part of the, the plan to uh, live. The Igora and the International Logic Party, I totally intend to use that to liberate all the animals around the world. So <laughs> that's, the, that's the fucking master plan. So, <laughs> <Da -da>. <laughs> yeah. so yeah, that's, that's the idea I'm, uh, I'm pushing in the Agora. Uh, I think people are actually very open-minded to that idea because it sells really well, because it actually, uh, well, when you look at the idea for animal liberation in Igora, it, it sells a lot better than opposing ideas. And so it will get a lot of support. Uh, and eventually we will create politicians who, uh, according to that idea, it's, it's gonna be impossible for people to ignore. People will have to become educated about that, so. And, and yeah, the idea will rise, that idea, I'll, I'll make sure of it, that idea will rise. Beautiful. All right. So we got less than miles. Um, we're getting close to six o'clock, but that's okay. We can blow right past the six o'clock mark. I'll probably just do a change of recording at some point. Um, and then we can continue on with uh, more discussions about strategy and collective superintelligence. Love this conversation. Insanely productive. Uh, less follow, followed by miles. Take it away, less. Sorry, um, I've, I've got other things I need to do. I'll pass. No, no worries, Les. Just put your hand up when you're ready to jump back in. Miles followed by Jamin. Take it away, Miles. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to say I'm vegan because people upstairs would say no, you're not, because I violate occasionally just because I'm not surrounded by vegans and I'm lazy. All right, so, but anyway, I do totally agree that it's the logical position for us to move to very quickly. And um, with respect to your system, you talked about the need to have this alongside of face-to-face -face meetings and town halls. Because there are occasions when you will need to have a secret ballot. Now, I'm also going to say that being in Canada, where we still use card, cardboard boxes with paper ballots and scrutineers and people to do the system of tallying ballots and reporting them, as opposed to machines, like there's so many machines used in the United States. Um, I am a firm believer that the paper ballot is still the way to go. I'm suspicious of these voting machines. And Ralph Nader, who's everybody knows is a big fan of mine, here's his book, 
breaking through power, you can hear him interviewing people where he says, yes, these voting machines cannot be trusted. So now your system is electronic as well, but you know, if you build in um, scrutineers of various sorts, it will have its credibility. And maybe it could be that we, you, you might incorporate the tech, technology that we've talked about, like Wakelet and Flipgrid, where if um, anybody disputed how I voted on anything and those issues that I'm comfortable to say out loud and you know by visual voice that this is my position because i'm not fearful of retaliation you know people at least would be able to maybe see me in a video saying yes this is how i voted on these things if anybody doubted the veracity um so uh, i'd like to conclude by um quoting ralph nader here and what's very important for everybody to be aware of and I'm not saying the United States is any worse than other nations, but in August 1971, Lewis Powell, a corporate lawyer in Richmond, Virginia, and soon to be justice of the United States Supreme Court, issued what would be later be referred to as the Powell Memorandum. The memorandum offered his analysis of the power balance in Washington and pronounced it in crisis, in a crisis for big business. His memo memorandum basically said, "There's too much democracy. You know, we got to get a handle on it. Can't have the people running the the nation." So, um, a crisis for big business. The forces of reform had brought many industries under a variety of regulations, and business was on the defensive. Powell urged a fundamental expansion and strengthening of the corporate lobbying apparatus, using some of the very techniques that the consumer, environmental, and other interests were deploying. These, so Ralph Nader was at the forefront of bringing in changes like environmental protection laws. These included, so the, the big, big corporate uh, powers brought together their corporate think tanks, aggressive use of media, advancing business views on campus and in the curriculum, greater involvement in elections and a mobilization of chief executives. It was time, Powell said, to mount an energetic, far-reaching counterattack against those who he believed would subvert the free enterprise system. So, and then um, there's some, you know, wonderful quotes from American presidents, Woodrow Wilson, Dwight Eisenhower, Theodore Dreiser, Theodore Roosevelt, which are basically um, saying, you know, that the government, for example, um, this here's Theodore Roosevelt. The citizens of the United States must control the mighty commercial forces which they themselves called into being. So your agora is, you know, a powerful effort of yours to move forward, citizen controlled, citizen led democracy, and it is a case of trying to get people not being passive. Sheldon Woolen, I don't know if you know Sheldon Woolen, Cesare, sociologist, and he said the downfall of civilization will be our passivity. So once again, kudos to you. And um, I wonder if you'd comment about your still believing in town hall meetings and what do you think about the, the ballot, the paper ballot, and um, it actually creates community to have voting done the old-fashioned way. Uh, I was just writing a response. Um, so I was saying with the secret ballot, uh, it's more necessary for, a, it's a pretty old school way of, of voting, you know, one person, one vote. It actually, uh, approval voting is a better voting scheme. And uh, when, when you can only cast a vote for one person, people can get really jealous and upset and controlling when you vote for the one person that you were told to vote for and not for the person you wanted to vote for. That's a problem. When you have approval voting, then you can, uh, it's much more difficult to come down on people who want to exercise their freedom 
uh, for voting who they actually want to vote for. So it's it's actually less corruptible in that manner. So you could have an a, you could eliminate the secret voting ballot. I think I think I might be wrong. Maybe this uh, this would have to be explored by uh, by people who spend more time. But I think on first glance. Uh, you could actually more easily have a, a non-secret, an open ballot with a uh, with approval voting. Uh, the other thing is that Igora is intended for a political party. It's not intended to be a general election mechanism. It, one of the main fail-safes of this system is that it is a primary election. Eventually, when we become the only political party in the world, then not always, but for the most part, if you become the nominee of the ILP, you will essentially most likely get elected as in the general election. Uh, but there will, it will still be possible for other contenders to enter. Um, well, I understand that, but I, I, to move things up in the stock market of ideas, you would have to be voting to move those up, I imagine. That's how they move up, don't they? And so, yeah, yeah. like, uh, maybe I don't want to let people know I'm against gun control because I don't want yeah. people with guns, you know, saying, well, let's get rid of him because, you know. Yeah, this is the point I was getting to. And then the other thing is that um, unlike anything else in the world, this actually gives people real pe uh, real political power. Uh, everything else, yeah, that doesn't give you political power. Igora does. It's the only thing that does. And since that's what it does, the people have real political power, then the people should be able to hold those who have the power accountable, which means they have to be able to hold people accountable. If you support a certain idea, just how you can call up your legislator for how they voted on a certain bill, well, people should be able to call you up and talk to you about why you supported a certain idea. Of course, you're insignificant. It's not like somebody's going to come at you. You know, at, 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 I mean, we're building a whole new culture of participation. But, uh, but the point is, people can confront you at the meetings. They can, you know, it, well, again, you know, it's, it's up to you whether you actually disclose what your uh, search name is in Igora. You could actually potentially make that private. Um, if you, well, if you come to the meetings, it will be public eventually the way the system will work. So other people within the meeting, they will be able to say, Miles, uh, you support these ideas. Uh, let me tell you why you're wrong. Uh, so yeah, people should be, if, if you're going to have the power, then people need to be able to hold you accountable. Uh, and, but hey, if you don't like that, don't support an idea that you're not proud to support. Uh, just don't support that idea. And maybe you shouldn't be supporting that idea. And that, coming back to that earlier point about uh, divisive ideas and hateful ideas, you know, there are a lot of people that will support hateful ideas in secret, but when it comes to supporting them in open, maybe they don't want to support, you know, I don't want to say the idea again, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a, basically some hateful things. Some people might secretly think that, but they might not want to say that in the open. And that's a good thing. That means those ideas lose. They actually lose in the stock market of ideas when people are not willing to proudly speak for those ideas. So maybe your idea is exactly one of those ideas that it's better that it's not being expressed if you're not willing to proudly say it. Um, I think that maybe there was something else I was going to say, but I can't think of it. Here. All right. Beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful discussion. All right. Well, next in the queue is Jamin. And it's been an hour and a half. It's been two and a half hours since we've had a break. So I vote that we take a short break and then maybe a longer break later or something like that. All right, Nancy. Great to see you. Um, and uh, or how are people feeling break wise? Well, it's two a.m. But oh, you know what? That's right. If you, uh, I'll tell you what. Then let's 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 hold off on the break because you're probably your next break is going to be a, a good night's sleep. I imagine, Cesare. So if you have energy, I'd I'd like to share with you what I was planning on sharing. Yeah. Uh, you, you're muted, Cesare. Second. Uh, oh, now I'm unmuted. Okay, I got confused. Yeah, coming at me. All right. Okay, I'll I'll just start a new recording. One second.